Well, there was a, another thriller, of course, on Saturday night at the MCG. This time, it was Bailey Fritz with a memorable goal. Max was huge in the last quarter, and Jake Lee will have to talk about him shortly as the Ds beat the Cats. There was some crazy misses, wasn't there, in the second Strange quarter? Game. No one could kick a goal, but the Ds certainly deserve to win. And, Kingy, you've got the lab analysis with thanks to Zero online accounting to make you do business better. Yeah, I thought that tactically this was as good as I've seen from Simon Goodwin. Straight line wide, played skinny ball, if you like. They didn't switch the ball too much. They did deep down back, but not through the corridor. And then when they got to 80 or 70 from goal, drop anchor. You know that Geelong are going to retreat. Chip the ball around for a sec. Allow the defenders in behind to get set. Because the biggest threat to long pose are Grime Myers, Close, Cameron, charging back to goal. So they allow them to get location. This is perfect. Now, if you are lucky enough to, to find a target inside 50, absolute bonus. And they went to town on them early. They got a few good looks. But you can see, same thing happened again here. Chip the ball around. So McDonald can locate. He can play the spy role on Cameron. He can pick him up whenever he likes. He can come up and take him if you, you know, go one-on-one -on -one if he wants. Cosy was brilliant. Some of his gut running is something we don't talk often about. And then when you go so slow, you allow the game's greatest weapon to get inside 50 and contested mark. So it all works for Melbourne when they play like this. If the game lives in contest, they are unbeatable. Same thing again here. Stephen Main, underrated kick, laces one out. So I thought it was just terrific coaching. Um, they challenged Geelong to do it in a different way. Um, they didn't allow them the luxury of corridor for the bulk of the night. They didn't take the game into the corridor. And I think it was brilliant. It was, it was terrific play. Yeah, they weren't going to get done on the counter-attack, no. were they? The way they just slowed it down when they, when they got to that part of the ground. And uh, they made Geelong work for it. And it was a great, great tactical win and great gutsy win by Melbourne. Oh, again, uh, Hawkins and Cameron both goalless, although... Jeremy had a couple of chances late that he'd like to have mm, again. <laughs> a couple of shocking shots for goal. How did they play him then, Kingy? Because you've talked a lot about this. Yeah, well, we love the way they play him because uh, we didn't know what the, the contenders were going to do against Cameron. So the spy role was terrific. Oh, I thought McDonald just said, oh, I'm going to wait for him. I'm not going to go all the way up. Um, but if he wants to engage in a foot race, I can go with him. And it was a perfect physical matchup. So similar attributes. You know, Jeremy's a, a star factor player, but they, they've got the same sort of running capabilities. So every time you become a sprint back to goal, look at this, bang, let's go. No worries. I can lock on, I can come with you. We, so, that, so he gets back to at least compete. Now, in the last few weeks, this has been a strolling goal for Cameron or an uncontested mark Or for he's Cameron. on a winger or someone else. Yeah, or he's on an undersized player. So this, this is perfect. And to get back, get a fist in there, that, that, that is defensive porn. That is just terrific play. The same thing here. What's the location? Off stoppage. It is you a late see, night show. <laughs> you can see Cameron get forward of McDonald, but he's quick to get back to him. You can still get beaten by good players. Right, so Cameron recovers quickly and he's up and he's back inside and he gets the sneaky little kick there from Grime Myers is terrific. So you've still got to have your wits about you and you can still get beaten. So Cameron got him late, but the job, the, they were in the fight. It wasn't a five goal game from Cameron that broke their heart. But this just shows that, the, you know, I just want to show, highlight a couple of positives for Cameron because when he gets it, he generally makes you hurt. That sort of kick there. He had a stinker in front of goals. I'm not, I'm not sure what actually <laughs> happened to him. He's the best kick in the competition in front of goals normally. But uh, such was, it was a brilliant game. We want to see more of it. I can't wait for them to go again in about uh, six weeks' time. The other thing that stood out from a Melbourne point of view, Joe, was Harrison Petty, who couldn't take a grab, as he said himself, for love nor money the last couple of weeks. But he was back to what we saw late last year. And good on Melbourne for persisting with him, because I think this is the key. I think if he had have played in one of the finals last year, Melbourne would have won at least one of those two finals, because he is such a great contested mark option. And we know they're worth their weight in gold, particularly in finals time, when you can take a contested mark. He took four of them on the weekend. And it, it also means what it allows for Jacob Van Royen and what it allows for Bailey Fritch. And I, I think he's crucial because last year, Jacob Van Royen took the most contested marks for Melbourne as a forward with 19, which ranked 22nd, 26th in the competition for key forwards. Petty's already taken 11 for contested marks in six games, top 10 in the competition. And look what it does for their player retention when they can get separation. So this is this year, targets inside 50, retaining the footy when it's targeted Van Royen's number one in the competition. 65% of the balls that's kicked in his direction, he's retained. 
Bailey Fritch is number three and Petty is number 14. Now, that's also part of the way Melbourne are being more efficient with their ball use. Mm. We've just shown they've gone from 15th to 7th so far this year with their efficiency going it's inside 50. It? It's different. It's, it's more patient and it's a bit more going to 1v1s rather than kicking just kicking to an area. They're kicking to a player. And I really like with it. It's still a work in progress and they're going to persist and develop as the season goes on. But I like the way they're going and they've got to conti- continue to persist with Harry Petty. He's not going to stuff the stat sheet. He's not going to kick 60 goals for the year. But the sum of all parts, he's got a pivotal role to play. All right, the Cats have lost their first game. Tom Hawkins is going to be an interesting question and he'll join the team on 360 as well. So that'll be interesting to see whether he keeps playing uh, Tom at the moment. They said they will. But we need to move on because Sydney's win against the Giants was a, a big one. They've now won four in a row. I think the next best for any team is two. And uh, they've beaten the Giants. It was a costly day, as we know, for the Giants. Um, although it looks like Tom Green's uh, ankle injury is not serious. But that'll be that. Kel Brown, it seems, for three weeks at least. But the Sydney Swans, they've gone to the top of the ladder. Yeah, and I want to talk about the power of three. The Sydney Roosters, the three at the top of the tree, which is Isaac Heaney, Errol Gould and Chad Warner, because they do it differently, Sydney. And if you look at just the, the basic numbers of contest and clearance, they stack up really poorly. You know, they're, they're 5, 33 and 52 in the competition. As a team, they're 15th in contest. The clearance, they're 7th, 45th and 58th. And, and as a team, they're AFL 5th, so not too bad. But when you look at the damage they possess, these three guys, number one, number three and number four in the competition for score involvements, they get the footy, they make you bleed. And what it does to the team is is quite frightening. So it's made them the most damage from um, turnover. So you give them the ball and turnover, they'll find a way through. It doesn't always look the same. It doesn't always have high speed. It can be a little bit of quality uh, through, through the middle of the ground with a patient approach. Um, and the scores from stoppage, well, it's not about the volume, but it's about the damage associated. So I think when you look at the Swans, you've got to, you've got to assess them differently. Where they play is the challenge. You know, they're, making a, they're making a forward line that doesn't look that good on paper efficient because of their quality and their high, um, their high, their high speed offence. I, I love what uh, John Longmire is doing with these guys. The influence of Brody Grundy cannot be understated when you're talking about the seasons that these guys are having. But these three roosters... Got the job done again. And, and, and let's be honest, if you look at the team stats or, or the individual clearance and contest numbers, you, you question where they sit in, in the AFL uh, rankings. You wouldn't have them, all three, in the top 20. But when you look at damage, they're in the top half a dozen. And what's important, you touch on the score involvements and, and the damage, but they all hit the scoreboard too. They're all goal-kicking midfielders, mm. so they're worth their weight in goal. There are a lot of teams that have gun mids that don't really hit the scoreboard. Mm. All of them are capable of kicking that's, multiple that's, goals. That makes a massive yeah. difference too, doesn't it? Will Hayward pops to. up. They yes, well, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Because they don't have the forwards. Yeah, so, I mean, that's still the question. And I asked you this in the office. Did it convince you about the Swans in terms of I'm finals? I'm not convinced about anything anymore. <laughs> I've lost a little bit of confidence after last week.